Hey, this is More Than Velocity. I'm Bart Pear here with Ryan Coton and Jordan Osagera. And today we have Hurston Waldrop on us, who is nice enough to join us. Uh, if you guys don't know, today is actually the Thursday before the MLB draft uh, this Sunday, and, and Hurston's actually projected top 20. Uh, he's a right-handed pitcher out of University of Florida, I was their Saturday starter, and uh, has actually been using the arm care system. So Hurston was, was kind enough to kind of come on and kind of talk about um, – not only the arm care testing, but just what's going on this week and what's, you know, all the crazy stuff that comes around one, the College World Series, and uh, and then getting drafted and all that stuff. So, Hurston, um, great to have you with us. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so, um, you know, I guess I, I kind of want to know your, your journey, uh, Hurston, about, like, you know, things you've learned, things you've done to prepare for competition. You know, a lot of athletes that are going to be out here uh, listening, um, they're going to want to know what are the what are the kind of some of the main things that you've been doing outside of using arm care. We'll get into that, but um, to get yourself to where you are now. Yeah, so a little like background about my, I guess, my strength and conditioning journey and everything that I've learned uh, in that field is uh, I, I kind of grew up around the um you know, you need really strong legs. That's going to be the base of your throwing. Um, you don't need to lift heavy overhead. Like it was, it was a lot of like old school, like, you know, didn't really believe in a lot of like your basic, I don't know, strength methods. And just, it was kind of like, you know, protect the shoulder and throw and long toss and you'll be fine. And, you know, you don't need weighted balls or, or anything to to do that. You just, you know, you just have to have strong legs and you'll be fine. So that that kind of got me through high school, and I was always like I could deadlift a ton, um, I could reverse lunge the house, but I you know I couldn't really do a pull up like my pull up wasn't very strong, couldn't really do push ups very well, just like upper body was just pretty weak. Um, so I got to college, and um, my strength coach at Southern Miss, he was very good. Uh, he kind of got me out of that little um, notion, and um, my my later years of high school, I did start. Um, working out and I, I really got into the weight room and really learned the value of, you know, just being an athlete in the weight room and the, it would transfer over to the field. And so, um, I would, that actually started, you know, kind of changing the way I viewed baseball. And I was blessed to have a good strength coach in high school who kind of helped me through that. And then, um, Southern Miss and then moving into Florida, but really like I, I value everything I do outside of baseball, um, a lot. And I put so much stock into working out and mobility from, you know, head to toe, shoulder mobility, uh, neck, back, uh, spinal flow. Uh, I mean, I, I can go as, I can go as deep as you want into it. I, I, I love all of it and love just the anatomy of throwing and uh, pitching mechanics. And so for me, the, you know, learning how the body moves and learning the best ways to take care of it um, you know, the, the more stock you put into yourself, the more you'll get out of it and the healthier you'll be. And so being able to, you know, use products like arm care and, you know, have things that'll give you results and will show you progress over time. I think it's, you know, you, you can't put enough time and effort into that because it'll, it'll give you so much uh, more reward on the back end. What, yeah. what I'm hearing on that is, from the, the experience me and Ryan have had, and we would set the, we would sit down in spring training and we'd go through these guys. What is your daily plan of what it is you want to do? And the guys who stuck around and they weren't up and down big leaguers, the guys who were established, they stayed there. They consistently had good results. They invested in themselves. Exactly. Everything you're saying is they're going, I'm going to be my own best advocate. While they would ask me and Ryan questions they didn't need us there to hold their hands. And that's what I get out of you is that you are your own best advocate, that you don't need someone to tell you, go do your mobility work. I understand mobility is boring, but you also understand the investment and the dividends that it pays long term. Because from my conversations I've had with you, text messages, phone calls, you know, a couple of Zoom meetings here and there is you don't want to just sign and play. You want to play for a very long time and you're willing to put in that work. And there's very few college kids, there's very few big leaguers that have that kind of ability to go, I'm going to research this and make sure I'm doing what's right for me. That's what I'm getting out of the conversation. And I hope that, you know, the younger athletes listening to this shoot, even those minor leaguers that are listening to this right now, that they're hearing this and going, this is what it takes 
And at the end of the day, you have to be your own best advocate. Yeah, absolutely. I, th I think that's it. You know, you can, you know, you can think you can do it all on your own and you can think that talent will take you as far as you want to go. But in reality, you know, you need, you need those resources outside to help you. And, you know, you need to, you need to be able to ask questions and ask your coaches and, you know, ask the people around you, because, I mean, you can say, you know, it all, but no one will ever know it all about, you know, how, uh, Duran or how Hicks does 105, like no, mm -hmm. no one will ever know that. So, I mean, it's, there's so many small pieces that go into the entire throwing motion and the, just the, the sport of baseball in general and being an athlete, um, in any sport really is just, you know, the small pieces and the small things you do will carry over, um, throughout time. So. Mm -hmm. I, I wanted to kind of extend, um, this, this question, cause now, you know, getting into arm care, you know, I'd like people to really know like your first experience with it and, and how that's evolved. It's just, um, I just, before you tell me about your experience as a player, I want to talk about your metrics because they're, they're very impressive. This is, this is why, you know, if I'm drafting athletes, I'm looking at this and I know that somebody is analyzing their strength consistently, they're going to have a more durable arm. They're going to be better prepared, um, throughout their development. And like Jordan and I used to talk about like, why do we restrict pitchers so much on pitch counts? when they come in and we were part of a process that did that. And if we had this tool, we would know, Hey, we're not going to pull them out of competition early to think that they are tired. We're going to actually have uh, information about that. And, and you don't show that. So I'm, I'm just going to talk a little bit about your metrics so that people scouts, uh, other individuals that are going to follow your career will understand. Um, and I'm going to read these. So the first thing um, about Hurston's arm, he maintained his ERIR balance the entire time. That means that the front of his shoulder and the back of his shoulder were optimized for strength. And, and one of the things that makes that so important, Hurston, is that you can position your arm, especially at maximal external rotation, um, uh, in a position that you're really loading the muscles to throw hard, but not just from um, you know uncoordinated layback. It, it's like you set your catapult and you're able to throw and the muscles aren't fighting each other. So you're able to really create great stretch shortening. So that's awesome. Um, the, the one thing that I thought was really interesting, looking at your post throwing fatigue, there were a lot of games that you had had pitched where afterwards you had over a hundred percent strength from your fresh state. So that means your baseline strength was good, but after games, your strength was even better. And for people that, you know, don't really know the physiology about that. That means that this individual has a very connected nervous system. That means over time with throwing effort, his strength increases. Okay. For the most part, that was amazing. Um, and you have absolutely showed like no signs of fatigue from what I saw. The other thing that I thought is interesting on the fatigue point, your scaption strength. And if people have not used the device and tested, that's, that's with our arm extended. Okay. The elbow's locked. You're pressing up at a 45 degree angle. It is the weakest part usually for any throwing athlete. When you, when you have strength, you have to apply away. And that on average, you had zero change from beginning. So your fresh exams when you're rested and after games in the most vulnerable position in one of the applications of that is that, you know, you have to maintain arm, arm, uh, like your release point, your arm position through your release point, which is with an outstretched arm. Okay. And, and that's just amazing to me because that tells me when I'm looking at this data, I'm thinking, okay, this athlete has a greater opportunity to be consistent in his release point. And that ball, that all of his pitches are going to work off of a consistent release point, which helps with tunneling and deception for batters. So that's awesome. Um, the other thing I noticed is we have this arm score. And for those of you who don't know the arm score, that is a relative strength measure of your total arm strength relative to the body weight. You know, and Hurston's not a little guy. And what I saw at the beginning, you made our cutoff, which is 70. So you started in the high 70s for this measure. And you got up to the 90s from the first moment you used arm care. I looked at your entire history and you were getting into the 90s uh, towards the towards the end of the season, which is amazing. Um, but what really impresses me most about this data, and if you are listening, this is where you're going to have a ton of confidence. 
we look at a measure called the strength velocity ratio. That is the pounds of total force for the throwing arm over the maximum velocity. That's in pounds per miles per hour. Our cutoff is 1.6. And from the beginning of the season, Hurston was over that 1.6, okay, in terms of reducing risk of pain and poor performance and injury. But he ended up almost with a 2.0. So you're exceeding those elements of strength. And I need to make sure people understand this is a safe pick for a pitcher. And Jordan and I have published research on how bad four-year college starters are for future war. So things like this, I would be, I'm saying, if we're going for a pitcher in the first round, it's this guy. It's this guy because I know the injuries, you know, the tired arm from a lot of work in college isn't going to impact it long, long term. And just listening to you, your body is your business. You prioritize it. So I just want to turn it back to you after talking well, about real this quick stuff. on that, Ryan, I, I don't want to okay. glaze over it. He's got the same profile that long term major league starters have. It's not like, oh, yeah, he we're comparing this kid with other other uh, college players. He's in that that lump. He's got the same thing that some of our, our our big guys that are using it, that are on 40 mans that have been pitching in the big leagues for a very long time. He's got that same profile from a strength standpoint. So I don't want to gloss over that <laughs> real quick. It's very important. This is compared to a major league standard. Oh yeah. Right. Like, I mean, that's why I think it's such an advantage. Like Jordan and I were, we're ingesting tons of data all the time. So we, we actually are the people that can, can, can qualify a throwing arm. When someone's like, Oh, he's got a real strong arm. It's like, no, he doesn't. No, he, this, okay. this is tangible data that it's a really Tan strong tangible arm. data. <laughs> yeah. And that's why I'm so impressed. So, you know, just turning it back to you, Hurston, it's like, all right, first experience with arm care, you know, and then all of a sudden how it was built into your process, because people have to know the evolution of how you continue to pay attention to your throwing arm. So uh, we first started using it at Florida, like the first day we stepped on campus and we started doing bullpens and everything. Um, Jarrett Schwein, our trainer, he was like, look, y'all have to use this like every day. Is like the only time you don't use it is after like y'all do upper body days. Like, but other than that, use it every day. Use it after you throw everything. And so I, you know, I kind of I didn't really know what it was honestly. Like I we I never used it before personally, and so it took me a little while to kind of get used to it. But then like it was like we started our our games and it's like we actually started playing in the fall and we started our scrimmages. And so the way they did it at Florida is we would pitch. So if I threw three innings, then I would add a day. So I would throw four days later. So I threw four innings and I would throw five days later. Um, so I was, I mean, I was throwing pretty regular. Like I, I, I threw a good bit in the fall. And so I was like, man, like, I'm, I don't know. I kind of want to see how I'm holding up. And so like, right before we started, I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to use this. I'm going to, I'm going to start using this and see if I can actually use it as a tool and I fell in love with it from the like the first time, like first couple of weeks, it was like middle of the week. I do my assessment and my numbers were a little bit lower. And then like the end of the week, like right before my start, my numbers would be back up. I'd be perfectly fine. And then I started to notice a trend where my internal was just outweighed my external by a ton. It was it was like 15, 20 pounds. Like it was a it was a pretty significant difference. And it was like right on the verge of um like. Uh, the the warn the the pink or mm -hmm. old line yeah the warning it was like right on the verge of it so I was like I mean you know in season we start playing and you know I get four or five starts in say I throw a hundred plus pitches in one of my first starts like that's you know that that could probably be an issue and so I I went home after Christmas break and and pretty much that whole fall too but I just I hammered external work and I, that's all I focused on was um, you know, balancing out that ratio to where it was, you know, it was even and, you know, there wasn't anything overpowering another. And so for me, having something that, you know, like I said earlier, that could show you those results and like show you the, you know, show you progress. It's, it's very, very rewarding as, as in a sport that's, you know, not very rewarding in most, most aspects. And so, <laughs> Um, you know, seeing something like that in the, in the weight room and, you know, seeing your progress over time, I think it's, you know, it's also a, a mental, um, you know, it's kind of a mental check, you know, being able to see progress 
for anyone. Um, but yeah, I mean, arm care, the, you know, the whole app and seeing, you know, the, the SVR score and the, you know, your arm scores, every, like just everything, you know, you can break it down in so many ways. And then the, my favorite was the, you know, you get the email, you get the full rundown after your whole report. I'd, I'd go sit and look at that thing for five, 10 minutes and just, um, break down everything and make sure everything was, you know, compare my last test to the one I just did, you know, my, my pre-throw post-throw. And so seeing, numbers and I, i'm a big i love numbers i love analytics and so seeing numbers for me was a big uh reminder and a big you know it, it helped me with progress through the fall and through the spring here here's a question that i have and this this may be something that we don't even want to fully dive into because i don't know how much access you have to things on it but did you notice that as your arm strength increased you started to maintain your pitch shapes better and i don't know if you had access to your pitch shape data over there uh, fully at Florida or how much you guys actually dive into on it. I, I really don't know, but did you notice as it got better, we've seen it a lot to where they maintain those pitch qualities. Yeah. So I actually had some issues with my slider early on. Um, so over the summer last year, I was, you know, went to USA, went, was going through the portal. Um, I was working out in like a absolute just dungeon. I, like I would, it was so hot in there. I'm in South Georgia, like, you know, it's middle of the summer. So I, I, I lost like six or seven pounds between the end of the season. And by the time I arrived at Florida. And so I actually lost a little bit of velo. not, it wasn't anything considerable, just kind of, you know, along with weight loss. And so, um, I, I lost feel for my slider completely, like had no feel for it. Um, and then once I started, you know, I started gaining weight back, I started getting my balance back in my shoulder. Um, actually, you know, I had feel for my curveball, I feel for my splitter. And so like, I was able to hold pitch shapes through an entire four or five inning outing in the fall. And then in the spring, I, I mean, like all of my metrics were, you know, my averages and my peaks weren't like that far of a difference like they were all pretty much relatively the same and so I, I did notice a um like my average velo and my peak velo were you know they were I don't know two to three miles an hour apart instead of you know having a wide range average and then my peaks way up here you know so I did I did notice a, um a lot of similarities with that too and I asked that question to follow up I was doing math on my phone here I was looking some stuff up and for big leaguers we have in the system, your profile matches guys that average six and two thirds innings pitched over an eight plus year career as a starting pitcher in the big leagues. So that's why I think your that your numbers are extremely special, and that's why like, to me, starting pitching is always one of those things that guys don't know what to do. But your profile matches not just one, but numerous players we have using our app. Won't use their names just because obviously we need that permission to do so that are averaging over eight plus seasons at the major league level, not including the minor leagues, six and two thirds innings pitched at the major leagues. That's pretty impressive from a strength standpoint. And that's where, you know, Ryan talks about that fatigue metric. We talk about that recovery score. We talk about those pitch shapes and how you start maintaining those over five plus inning outings in the fall, not even paying attention to what's going on in the spring, watching your pitch in the world series. I'm going to guess it was probably a lot more than that five inning <laughs> that you're maintaining those, those pitch shapes. But that's why we we hammer in strength is so important. And like you said on your journey, you're talking about how it used to just be legs. And then all of a sudden you get to where you're doing pull-ups. You're learning from those that group over in Mississippi. You're learning from that group in Georgia. You're learning from that group in Florida on how important strength is, understanding the balance. And all this stuff relates to performance. You know, what you do in the weight room does correlate. What you do on the field is going to correlate. Everything's going to piece together. I know I went off on a tangent there and Barton didn't stop me, but I just wanted to point that out that you, you get one, you get cool... one tangent, Jordan. That's or get it. one, <laughs> you get one per one per episode, but it's, it's a really cool just to kind of look at that. Now that we're getting that bigger data set and going, this kid matches what the really, really, really big boys are doing. Yeah. The, the one thing too, I wanted to just say is the frustrating part in major league baseball is when you get such a talent like Hurston and they progress so fast and they get to the big league level and you're developing them in the major leagues. You're like, 
you're giving them restrictions or there are a lot of pitchers, young guys that we push through that they literally, you know, they had, they were limited. Um, they didn't get enough work. They were just so talented that at the major leagues, when they got there, um, you know, they couldn't hit a certain inning count. Like th this is why I think the data and putting it in your hands, Hurston, to talk about with your, your major league staff, um, to communicate the things that you needed to be individualized, but to show them, hey, I'm not fatiguing. I got really high arm strength data. You know, on my first major league season, please allow me, you know, please take the training wheels off because, you know, I'm ready. My arm's ready. And like for a major league team bringing you in, I see that, you know, them having a lot of confidence to know that when I get this player in the big leagues, he is a ready-made starter. We can count on him to, if he's performing well, we're not pulling him out after 75 pitches, you know, because the win expectancy goes down. So you don't want to do that. And you, you know, you're really, you know, I think in a, in a good driver's seat and just listening to you, this is like the mission I think for our company is just getting players to have the responsibility for their career, being player led and coach informed you know, telling them, sharing that information, saying, hey, we need to do this um, because this is what my data is showing me. You know, I know that all the other, you know, you have the organizational arm care program and all of the pitchers may be doing it. Can we adapt mine so that I can make these fixes to give me even more robustness? So, you know, I'm, I'm excited for you. I really am. And I'm excited for whatever team, you know, makes this good decision to have you know, someone who is not just velocity conscious to maintain that, but to also make sure that you're going to, you're going to get the most important metric, which is innings picked, pitched, you're going to be out there, you're going to be able to post. So, you know, I'm, I'm super excited for you, man. Thank you. Well, Erson, we only got a few more minutes left. I wanted to just get your take on the college world series and just the whole experience of it. And not just not just the finals, which is practically a home series for LSU, but the whole the whole thing of being up in Omaha and just, um, you know, give us a little rundown on that. Yeah, so I think I didn't I didn't even realize we were in Omaha until um, like the it was like the ninth inning of the Virginia game. And uh, we're out, it was like for me, it was, you know, we're playing baseball. We're we're in, like, yeah, we're in Omaha, but like. You know, we're not in the championship game yet. Like we're not trying, we're we're, you know, we're still playing baseball. We still have places to go. And so um we won like we won the super regional and it was like, oh sweet, like we're going, like we're you know, we're going to Omaha. Oh my gosh. And then like we get there, we practice on the field, and it's like this place is insane. Like the Charles Schwab field, uh, we had like a thousand I don't, I'd say like 5,000 fans show up just for practice, like just to watch us hit VP on the field for 30 minutes. And so, I mean, like from the moment we stepped in that place, it was just every fan, every baseball fan ever was there. And the hype around that entire place was unreal. Like the entire city's based around that tournament. And so, you know, we, we started playing that game and uh, we were losing and then, uh, Ty Evans hits a home run. We're one run down. Wyatt Langford hits a home run, and then we're games tied, bases loaded, no outs. It's like I mean, it was it was unreal. Like that first game, it's like this is a heck of a way to start our Omaha experience. And then game uh, game two, Oral Roberts, we had a rubber match against them, and then um, that was a really close game. And I, 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 it felt like every game we played was a heart attack or, you know, we were right there and it like, it didn't matter who we were playing. All eight teams were there for a reason. And it was from the first game to the last, it was definitely the most memorable baseball experience. And it's, I mean, if you can't experience something like that and say like, this is why I play baseball, then, you know, you're, you're doing the wrong thing. You're, you're not in the sport for the right reason. And so, I mean, I, I will, I'll remember every second of that place for the rest of my life. So it was awesome. I loved it. Yeah. I mean, we enjoy, I definitely enjoyed it. I think it was one of the, one of the best um, college world series I've seen in a while. Just, just enough. There's fireworks, there was close games. There was, there was everything. It was, it was a good one for sure. So I started the podcast talking about um, 
you know, the draft coming up. Uh, what's what's this weekend looking like for you? So, I'm, I mean, I'm pretty much going to be taking it easy this weekend. It's kind of up to this point. It's just like, you know, talking to teams, but I mean, you know, and enjoying the enjoying the enjoying the downtime and you know I'm a little nervous about it but then again it's like it's most of it's out of my control so it's kind of mm -hmm. just being along for the ride and um, I'm going to be here with my family having some friends over for a little draft party so just you know taking it all in enjoying everything that I've worked for for you know since I was six years old and but I mean really this is you know this is a part of the journey and this is a part yep. of what I play and so you know, this is just another step and another another goal in the book. And, you know, there's still plenty more after that to keep going. So this is just a, a box I can check and, you know, say we're, we've made it this far and we can keep going. Absolutely. Hurston, hey, I appreciate your time. I think this was a, uh, some great insight here. Um, and, you know, until next time, take care and best of luck uh, this weekend. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yeah.